First of all, thank you all for being here today. We thought it would be an easier process on Michael and the family if we just gathered you all in one room and just gave a statement um, this way. Uh, you all have been with us for the most part, and I say you all, I'm talking about the Oklahoma Press, uh, from the very beginning, and uh, we are most grateful for your coverage of this story. Um, let me introduce everybody if you don't remember. Uh, my name is Vicki Behenna. Uh, this is my husband, Scott Behenna. Of course, this is Michael and his middle brother, Curtis. Um, I'm sorry, Brett. I was thinking about, that's Brett Behenna. The youngest brother, Curtis, is not here. I was meaning to mention Kirby. My daughter-in-law, Kirby, is out of town. She's not here, and of course, Curtis is in Michigan with his wife, Jessica, so they're not here as well. So um, please don't record the part that I got Brett's name wrong. <laughs> I did that when they were young, and I'd get mad at everybody, and they were Michael, Curtis, Brett. I don't know who you are. Anyway, sorry about that, sweetie. <laughs> um, as you all know, that this has been uh, a very long journey for us for the past 10 years. Uh, Michael uh, was uh, charged with this murder in, uh, I think during the summer of 2008. Uh, we went to trial in February of 2009, in which case he was convicted. Uh, because of the uh, failure to disclose exculpatory evidence during the trial, Jack Zimmerman, Michael's uh, defense lawyer at the time, filed a motion for a new trial, which was finally adjudicated in March of 2009. Uh, the judge concluding that there was not, uh, or should not grant a mistrial, and Michael was taken into custody and taken to Fort Leavenworth uh, Disciplinary Barracks, where he resided for five years. Um, thankfully, uh, with the help of many people, including the two senators in this state, that's Senator Enhoff uh, and now Senator Langford, he was Michael's um, congressman at the time. With their assistance, Michael was released after five years. Um, it came home, he's been living in Guthrie, um, you know, doing what he's wanted to do, and that is to live peacefully um, in a community. Um, as you know, uh, there has been a push recently for us to um, try to get a presidential pardon for Michael. Uh, the reason we asked for a presidential pardon uh, is multi-layered, uh, primarily because Michael was serving his country in a combat zone at the time this incident occurred. Uh, we believe that a pardon is a grant of mercy and grace and forgiveness, which is what I think Oklahoma is about. And so uh, we hired, um, and really hired is, is kind of loosely gathered, John Richter, who was the U U.S. Attorney uh, when I was in the U.S. Attorney's Office, agreed to help us in our quest for a presidential pardon. And so he has kind of led the charge um, so that's John Richter at King and Spalding in Washington, D.C. We are eternally grateful to a lot of people who have helped us in this process. As you imagine, uh, this concludes this chapter of our life. We are eternally grateful to President Trump uh, for taking this case, for understanding the circumstances of how this incident occurred, that it was an incident that occurred, as I said before, in a combat zone. Uh, we are eternally grateful to former Governor Fallon for assisting us throughout the process. I mean, she was Michael's congresswoman at the time, and then as governor, she also uh, took up his banner in requesting that he be released from Leavenworth, and of course, has supported us in our pardon request. I've already mentioned John Richter, who we cannot thank enough uh, for his assistance in this. The Attorney General of the state, Mike Hunter, as you know, has written a number, I think two letters in particular, to um, the President requesting a pardon. Um, again, I want to thank the Senators for their assistance, Langford and Inhofe. The Oklahoma Congressional Delegation has supported Michael. We're eternally grateful to them. Our Oklahoma Senators and, and uh, legislatures, representatives actually signed a resolution uh, requesting that Michael be pardoned. We're grateful for them. In addition to that, there are thousands of just everyday Americans who have supported our family and Michael over this 10-year process. We are so grateful to them. They didn't have a dog in this hunt 
Um, and uh, we just needed their support and love to be able to complete this journey. I have to mention Beverly Pearlson with the Band of Mothers. She contacted me very early on in March of 2009 after Michael's conviction, um, well, after he was convicted and the mistrial was denied. Uh, she has been an argent supporter of me and helping hold uh, me up throughout this process. Uh, the UAP, I think Michael will talk about, and the Patriot Guard, and the defense lawyers, Jack Zimmerman in particular, and his group that stood with us. Professor Ty at the University of Oklahoma helped us do the cert petition to the Supreme Court. There have just been so many people uh, that have assisted my family and Michael. And with that, I'm going to let Michael okay. make his statement. Okay. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming. There are uh, many people I want to thank. So I wrote them all down just to make sure I, I didn't forget about them. Uh, I brought my lawyer brother so he could do all the reading. Right. right didn't know you right, do that. Yeah, right, right. Um, okay, so I want to start off by thanking uh, President Trump, of course. Um, this is something that he didn't have to do. Um, I am very grateful that he took it upon himself to even consider my, my petition for a pardon. So, um, President Trump, uh, uh, the Attorney General Mike Hunter, um, John Richter from King and Spaulding, who took the, my pardon on pro bono, um, former Governor Mary Fallon, the Oklahoma Congressional Delegation, uh, my lawyer from my, my trial, Zach, Zach, uh, Jack Zimmerman, and uh, Zimmerman and Levine Law Firm out of Houston, Texas. Um, uh, thank you for them, to them for uh, preserving the intentional errors during my trial. Um, family, friends, girlfriend Brittany, uh, Senator James Langford, Senator Inhofe, uh, the United American Patriots, who raised money for um, you know, war criminals that a lot of them are in Leavenworth, there are some that are out now, but they raise money for those, you know, alleged war criminals um, for their, uh, their trials. Uh, the Patriot Guard, um, and let us not forget that there are, there are three men that still sit in Leavenworth today um, charged with war crimes. Uh, these three guys are, are uh, good friends of mine, they're good men. Um, uh, I must mention their names, uh, John Hatley, uh, Clint Lawrence, and Derek Miller. Um, there have been uh, uh, reports out there that, that I was pardoned because I killed an Iraqi, or killed an Arab, or killed a Muslim. This isn't the reason that, that I received a pardon. What I was told by President Trump was, and, and what came out in his press release, was I received a pardon because of the prosecutorial misconduct that happened during my trial. If you believe that, that trials are a search for justice and the truth, in my case, the, the, the prosecutorial misconduct that happened um, was not corrected by the appellate courts. They ended up protecting the, the uh, prosecutorial misconduct that happened during my trial. So President Trump corrected, you know, this is the, his way of correcting what happened during my trial. That's how I took it. It's not because, uh, you know, those other reports out there because, you know, I killed some Iraq. It's not it. Um, so with that, um, I'll open it up to any questions anybody has. Can you talk about when you got the phone call? Yes. Uh, okay, so uh, the phone call I received, it was, uh, um, okay. um, it was 2.30, and I was talking to my dad on the phone. I was driving into Guthrie, and I'm talking to my dad, and I get a call on the other line, and it's from a number I didn't recognize. And I thought it was a solicitor or something, so I didn't answer it. Well, they left a message, and after I got off the phone with my dad, I listened to the message, and the message said, uh, um, Lieutenant Behenna, this is Molly from the White House, President Trump's office. The President would like to talk to you, so when you have time, <laughs> please give me a call back. And, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, so I ended up calling back, 
<laughs> of course, but I mean, at the time, I'm just, uh, I mean, I couldn't believe it. You know, I was speechless. I, I mean, I, I was breathing real heavy. My heart's beating real fast. And, and uh, I ended up calling back, and, and I get a hold of Molly from the uh, White House. And she says that, that President Trump's on the other line, but he'll call you back. So I'm, I'm waiting in my car, you know, waiting on this, this call. And, and uh, of course, Molly calls back, and she puts President Trump on. And, and, uh, uh, and he says, Michael? And he's like, this is, uh, this is President Trump. And, and at this time, I'm just, I have tears in my eyes. My heart's beating fast. And, and uh, uh, I'm smiling from ear to ear. And I had a feeling I knew what it was for. <laughs> and uh, so he says that, that uh, um, you know, your, your record is going to be wiped completely clean. Uh, you're, you're going to receive a pardon, and, and you deserve it. And he said, there's, there's cases that I've been looking at, and yours really stuck out, and you came highly recommended. And, and uh, um, <laughs> I mean, it was just an unbelievable moment, really. So. Were you surprised that he personally called you? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, that's, that's not how I expected it to happen. What I thought was going to happen was my lawyer, John Richter, was going to be called, and then he would call me and let me know that, that the pardon happened, and, and uh, that's not how it happened. President Trump called, which I think says a lot about the man. I mean, I mean he didn't have to do it that way. He could have just uh, uh, told my lawyer and passed it down that way, but you know, it's more uh, personable. For him to call. What day was that? Uh, my days are all mixed up. Uh, Tuesday. 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 Last Tuesday. Then? No, no, no it's Tuesday. Yesterday. Yeah. Okay. Well, yes. Monday. Monday. No, no, Monday. Monday. <laughs> we Monday. Don't know. It was, right. These days are all running together. I mean, it's just been crazy ever since the pardon happened. There's so many calls and messages. So yes, yeah, Monday. Yeah. One of the last times our station talked to you was when you came home about five years ago. Uh -huh. What's this moment like for you right now? Obviously, that moment was very emotional, very well moment. What's this moment like for you right um, now? Well, okay, so this moment is, of course, a, a very happy occasion, um, just like it was five years ago when I came home. The difference is, um, I, I think when I came home, I just wanted you know, to be left alone and, and wanted you know, family close. And I, I think that's a result of where I came from. Uh, you know, just spending five years in Leavenworth, you know, um, uh, I think you guys can understand. So then, five years later, you know, I, I mean, I like talking to people and, and going out, so it, there, there's a difference. Um, but both um, happy occasions, of course. What's yeah. next for you now? What, next? Yeah, I mean, we uh, talk about us all the time. You know, <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know, as far as what goes. Like, what, what do you mean? Just, just plans? Yeah. I mean, I, I enjoy what I'm doing right now. I work on a cattle ranch in Guthrie. I have 20 acres of my own. I have horses and, and chickens and, and uh, goats and <laughs> cattle. So uh, I'm enjoying what I'm doing right now. How does this change things for you? Um, okay, so there are restrictions when you're on, on parole, such as you have to register as a, a violent offender in the county that you live in every year. Um, anytime you want to travel outside the Western District of Oklahoma, you have to put in a travel form. Uh, and then you have to get permission not only from your parole officer, but the, the place that you want to go to. Um, there are, are monthly supervision reports that I had to do. Um, uh, I mean, I couldn't vote. Now I can. Um, uh, what else is that? I know there's, there's some other stuff, but, you know, stuff like that. So, it changes my life now that, that you know, I'm, I'm pardoned. I can do these things or don't have to do, you know, some of the things I listed. How about, like, emotionally or does, I mean, does this vindicate what you and your family have been fighting for for, like, you know, 10 years or whatever? Well, yes. Yes, absolutely. I mean, do you yeah. feel like... I told you so. I mean, you know, well, not so much like you know sticking it in, in somebody's face. You know, it's just like um, the. I, I think the best case scenario would be I'd get a new trial. I mean, but the likelihood of that happening is, is slim to none. I've I've been through all my appeals, 
So this, I look at it as the, I mean, it's the best thing that could happen. Me getting a pardon. So. Michael, there, yeah. there's still some people who question the whole incident, you know, why you, were, why you took uh, right. Musser out there, and, this, and the, all the circumstances. There's, you know, the prosecution of it, and then there is just the episode in general. I mean, could you kind of address that? I mean, like, how would yeah. you respond to um, the doctors about what? Well, what the, the prosecutors had said that I took Monsoor out to the culvert to execute him. This was their theory during trial. They, they never, they, the prosecutors never put on any forensic experts. Experts, they never proved their theory during trial. Their own forensic expert is the guy that supported me and what I said happened. This is, this is part of the, the prosecutorial misconduct. They sent their own forensic expert home. So they had a theory. Their theory was Monsoor was shot in the head first and then shot in the body. They never explained how that body shot happened. See, Monsoor fell, you know, laying down. So I, in order for that body shot to happen and the trajectory to be horizontal, I would have had to lift his arm up, squat down, and shoot to make that, that trajectory horizontal. So it's something that they never explained during trial. Um, and like I said, their own forensic experts supported what I said happened. Um, does that answer your so this went through all, also, this went through all of the levels of military, um, mm -hmm. you know, the military's uh, courts of appeal, and they, you know, you've been lost at every level. What, what's your feeling about the military uh, justice system now? Um, the, the military justice system, uh, the, like I said, there, there are appeal, appellate courts put into place to correct any kind of infractions or injustices that happen during trial. Um, in, in my situation, I'm afraid that it, it uh, and, and maybe in others, I can't speak on others, I don't know about them, but in mine, I think that, that they tried to protect the, the conviction that happened during uh, my trial. Do you know what the catalyst was? I mean, how long have you guys been working on that part that finally got it to trust Two him? years now? Two. Do you have an idea what it was that finally no, I don't know. I know one thing. There, there were a lot of people that stepped up and uh, not only supported him um, directly to the president, but uh, took took a, a hand in prayer and support and encouragement of those that could talk to the president. In other words, congressmen, senators. So the people out there, um, and, and many of them we do not know, we've never met, but they continually support him and the, the other soldiers that he mentioned that, uh, that really don't have the voice that he, Michael got. Michael was very fortunate. A lot of people rallied around him initially, um, but uh, these other soldiers sit there with cases that are, um, as Chris mentioned, you know, the, the appellate courts, I'm not sure they really review these cases as stringently as the civilian world. Um, I think a real hard look needs to be made of the, uh, the Army um, UCMJ. And um, not that it's not a good system, it's just I'm sure somebody needs to look at it. Um, because I think there are rulings that, that sit in those courts right now that are very detrimental to those that serve and, uh, and those that will serve in the future. And one of them, some of those rulings are in Michael's case. They sit in that appellate court. They're, they're very grave for those that, that serve and will have to possibly be involved in, in uh, deadly force. I know you guys have been fighting tirelessly for Michael. Can you talk about just what it was like when you got the news from him after he got that phone call? Uh, I'll tell you what Scott's response was after we called him. He's like, I'm going to need a job. I mean, he's been <laughs> working. Well, eight hours a day, every day. I'll tell you, my immediate response when Michael called back, because I was talking to him, and then he talked to the president, and then he called me back, and he said, I'm a free man. And I, uh, I was, I was uh, oh, what happened? He said, well, President Trump just called me. And I said, no, I have 35 years in law enforcement. No, that, that didn't happen. And in fact, um, I asked for his number that he called from, and I called it back. Um, 
and I talked to Molly, and uh, and I just told her I who I was, and I was just a little skeptical of, of what just happened, and she says, no, 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 I assure you, it, it happened, and she hooked me up to the White House Council, and I talked to them, and <laughs> I was good, but it was uh, it was pretty uh, pretty amazing. Um, um, not again, we're parents. We'll we'll fight for our child as any parents would, but. Um, the amount of support that we've received uh, since that moment um, on Facebook and, and any other way they can communicate with us has just been astronomical. Um, people reminding us that, you know, I, mean, I remember I communicated with you six, seven years ago, and, and we've totally supported Michael all along with prayers and, and thoughts and, and actions. I'm telling these people out there that, that rallied around Michael's case were amazing. Um, and we're eternally grateful for them. Michael, have you have you ever heard from any of the fellow soldiers that were in your unit, if I'm using the correct term? Absolutely. Yeah. What, 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 they, what have they said to you? Uh, well, just congratulations. We've been praying for you, long time coming, and you know that sort of thing. But yeah, I've I've heard from them. You know, starting uh, Monday. You know, what about, what about before? Before, oh yeah, I keep in contact with some of my soldiers too. Yeah. We'll have a gathering. We'll, <laughs> we'll get them all together and, and it'll be, be a know, good time. I would like to put my pen and paper down and, and attend that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You all are invited. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> how old are you now? What's how old are you now? 35. 35. I'm 25. Mm -hmm. Well, you can go to the 25 when it started. Yeah. Right, right. I think he spent his 25th birthday. Was it in custody? Yeah, I was I was taken into custody. Let's see, I was in Leavenworth. Well, I was 24. So I turned 25 in Leavenworth, got out when I was 30. You plan to continue the ranch work? Yes. What? Now, perhaps I, I'm old and I'm, I mean, I'm 60, so I misremember stuff, but uh, I seem to recall at one point it was said that you had planned to make military a career. Mm -hmm. You had? Mm -hmm. That's, yes. But obviously out of the question now. But, right. But now you, now you want to raise cattle. Yes. You know, um, just a put some background on this. When Michael was taken into custody, he had, he had a wonderful major that he was working with, Tony Taylor, mm -hmm. who uh, prepared Michael in the event the motion for a mistrial was denied. And I remember him telling Michael that um, the motion for mistrial was denied. It was a very emotional thing, as you can imagine, because we felt sure, because of the prosecutorial misconduct and the hiding of evidence, that he'd be granted a new trial. Um, but the judge gave us about 15 minutes with Michael before he was taken off in handcuffs. And we were sitting in the room and Major Taylor came up to Michael and he said, Michael, you've been given the opportunity of time. And most of us don't have the gift of time. And so you can decide to use that time wisely or you can sit there and fester and become angry and bitter uh, over that time. And Michael took that advice to heart, and so he began reading, I think Nelson Mandela's book was the first book that he read when he was in custody. And then he started reading where his prison cell was, that you could look over the Kansas landscape and there were farms. And he started reading books about how to raise cattle and goats and everything else. And about, what was it, two or three years into it, he said, you know, when I get released, that's what I'm going to do. Um, so he educated himself about how to raise cattle, and that's what he's been doing. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I'm the rancher. You have the one brother, the lawyer, the other one's a doctor. I'm the one that doesn't get talked about much at the dinner table. <laughs> <laughs> he provides a dinner. <laughs> yeah. That's right. yeah. I got a, a red, did it? Brett. 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 Yes. Would you spell it? Oh, yeah. B-R-E-T-T. -T. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? Thank you all so much for letting us do it this way. It's, um, as you can imagine, yesterday was just chaotic and it was just much easier for us to gather in a room, answer your questions and, and 
go back to living a peaceful life. That's all Michael ever wanted to do is just leave, live peacefully. But thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, we, Vicki and I tried. We went to every every annual clemency hearing that Michael had in Washington. Believe it or not, there's another very curious uh, way that the military um, um, holds their hearing. A clemency hearing for Michael, he couldn't attend, even when he left Leavenworth. We asked for clemency, which is a reduction in his sentence or total um, um, the removal of his sentence at that point or his parole. Michael couldn't attend, so Vicki and I attended every year um, to try to get it reduced. And um, we took Brett one year when, uh, when he was eligible for parole. Not only clemency, but he could get parole. Brett argued that case and he was awarded parole. So it's a good litigator. <laughs> Very convincing. Scott, are you, are you still with the FBI? No, I retired. Okay. Because his job was writing letters and emails to people for the past. Well, taking care of his ranch when he works on the big one. Yeah, so, no, I, I enjoy working with Michael now. So, I don't know, but I'm guessing it was a dishonorable discharge? Um, it's a well, it's just like a dishonorable discharge. It's called a dismissal. Because I was a, an officer in the Army, officers get dismissals and enlisted soldiers get uh, you know, bad conduct discharges or dishonorable discharges. So does that go away as well? With this? Well, it's a good question. We'll, yeah, we'll a good work question. on that. Yeah. We'll work on that. I mean, there are some administrative things that I think uh, John Richter and I will be working on, um, restoring civil rights, his voting rights, and things of that nature. But one of them at the, on the top of my list is to change it to from a dismissal. Yes. It's, it simply says dismissal. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. For officers, that's what they get. Right, which is an equivalent of a dishonorable discharge. Yes. Okay. What, what would the change be to? Honorable. Honorable, okay. honorable dismissal. Okay. Well, it would just be an honorable mm -hmm. discharge right. rather than a dismissal from the okay. Army. There are general discharges, too, that are <coughs> less than honorable. So I, who knows what, what we'll wind up with, but certainly they'll. You might be able to, yes, I'm never served in the military. Uh, <laughs> my apologies. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.